Low back pain. When the patient comes to you for evaluation for low back pain, the first question you ask the patient, do you have any bladder or bowel problems? You want to separate low back pain or acute low back pain from coda equina. Coda equina is an orthopedic emergency. It needs to be diagnosed early and treated by surgery early. Make sure you don't miss coda equina. Ask the patient about bladder and bowel changes. If there is any concern, you need to get a STAT MRI with a wet or a STAT reading. Acute low back pain or low back pain with sciatica where the pain radiates to the leg and to the foot. Both conditions are initially treated conservatively for at least six weeks by physiotherapy, anti-inflammatory, limitation of activity as guided by the pain, even if there is a big disc in the MRI. So wait six weeks. 90% of the patient will resolve the symptoms in one month. Smoking, depression, vibration increase the incidence of low back pain. Intradiscal pressure change with positions. The lowest pressure when the patient is supine the highest pressure when the patient is sitting, leaning forward, and holding weight. Now the patient comes with low back pain and had a history of cancer, so you need to get an x-ray and MRI, especially if the pain at rest and at night. In case of renal tumor, you probably need to do arteriography and embolize the spine lesion. The spine is a common location for metastatic tumors. The metastasis occurs in the vertebral body and it goes to the pedicle. Loss of about 30 to 40 percent of the bone mass should occur before we can detect the lesion on the x-ray. Loss of the pedicle bone will give us a wink sign. How about if the patient has infection? Infection will occur in the disc space. The sedimentation rate and CRP will be elevated. Only 50% of the patient will have fever, and less than 50% will have elevated WBCs. So you will get a blood culture, which is positive in about 24%. You will get an MRI, and you will give antibiotic as guided by the biopsy and culture and sensitivity. If it happened that the patient has epidural abscess, you will do surgery, especially if there is deterioration of the neurological function. If we get infection post-surgery, you can diagnose it by C-reactive protein, the CRP. How about osteoporotic fracture? When osteoporosis starts causing fracture, it starts with the rest, then the spine, then the hip. So if you have an osteoporotic spine, you want to treat it before it goes to a hip fracture later on. And if you have one spine fracture, that will lead to more spine fracture. After one year of treatment with medication, you decrease the incidence of vertebral fracture by 60%. After two years, you decrease the incidence by 40%. So in general, when you're dealing with a patient with low back pain, you treat the patient conservatively. Don't get x-rays in the first four to six weeks unless there are some red flags, such as patient is older, or patient have metastatic tumor, or the patient has history of cancer, or infection is suspected, or the patient has trauma, or osteoporotic fracture because the patient is taking steroids. So you get the x-ray. 
And you may see an x-ray of a patient that looks like ankylosing spondylitis. At that point, look at the SI joint. It starts at the SI joint. You may get HLA B27. You will find that there are marginal syndesmal fights with diffuse ossification of the disc space without large osteophyte formation, which is different than the dish, which occurs in diabetic. You get hemoglobin A1C. The syndesmophytes are non-marginal, and they have larger osteophytes. It is the diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperistosis which will have flowing ossification along the anterolateral aspect of at least four contiguous vertebrae, and that is not enclosing the spondylitis. So you're going to get an MRI at a certain point for the spine. Well, you need to start first with x-rays. MRIs are a little problem because, number one, there are abnormal MRIs in asymptomatic patients. It is false positive. 35% in patient less than 4 years of age and 90% positive MRIs in asymptomatic patient that are more than 6 years old. The second problem is the MRI with a dye. Gadolinium will differentiate a disc from a scar. Both granulation tissue and the current disc can look alike on routine MRI. There will be contrast enhancement when there is granulation tissue because it's vascular. So there will be contrast enhancement. However, when there is a recurrent disc herniation, the dye will not enhance because the disc is a dead piece of tissue. It is avascular. So when you try to differentiate between recurrent disc and a scar, you will inject the dye, you get the MRI, and if there is a vascular enhancement, then it is a granulation tissue, you will need to sit tight and not to do surgery. However, if there is no enhancement, then it is a recurrent disc. It is avascular, that's why it doesn't enhance, and if the recurrent disc causing a lot of pain or symptoms to the patient, then you probably need to do surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.